Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Hall. I'm a specialist in non-surgical spinal decompression. Our topic today is spinal stenosis. The word stenosis simply means a narrowing. I am holding in my hand two spinal vertebrae separated by a disc. The central canal is the canal that goes up and down right through here from your brain to your tailbone and this is the canal through which passes your spinal cord. Central canal stenosis is a narrowing of this canal right in here where your spinal cord goes. Foraminal stenosis is a narrowing of the intervertebral foramen. The word foramen simply means a nerve hole. So the way this thing is constructed, the spine is the big thick thing and this runs up and down through the central canal. When you snap two vertebrae together it creates a hole through which the nerve roots exit and the scientific term for that nerve hole is a foramen. And when I hold the vertebrae back up here, the foramen is this hole right in here through which passes the spinal nerve roots. So the spinal cord is going up and down through the central canal. The nerve roots exit on the sides through the intervertebral foramen right here. So there are two kinds of spinal stenosis, central canal stenosis and foraminal stenosis. So that was simple enough. Now the question now becomes what exactly is it that's causing those canals to get narrower? The first one is, is that as a disc degenerates it gets dry and as it gets dry it gets narrower. It loses its height and as these vertebrae get closer together the nerve hole or the intervertebral foramen actually gets smaller. The second reason why this canal, the central canal or the foramen can get narrower is when a disc bulges or herniates. If the bulge is toward the side where the nerve root exits through the nerve hole or the intervertebral foramen then we'll have foraminal stenosis. If the bulge is central down the middle then of course that can impact the central canal right, resulting in central canal stenosis. The third and fourth reasons why these canals or nerve holes can get smaller is that as a disc degenerates, it dries out, it gets closer together, it begins to bulge, it loses its shock absorbing ability, creating more stress on the joint. Now remember, these joints are held together by muscles and ligaments, just like all the other joints in your spine. And if there's more strain or stress placed upon those joints, the muscles and the ligaments actually work harder. A spasmed muscle will actually thicken. And because the intervertebral vertebrae are held together by muscles, as the muscles thicken, they take up room and sometimes can compromise the space for the nerve in either the central canal or the intervertebral foramen. Ligaments also help hold these joints together, and as a ligament is stressed and strained, it too will thicken. And as it thickens in the central canal, the result is central canal stenosis. If the ligaments that hold the back part of the vertebrae together thicken, or the joint capsules of the facets thicken, they too will take up room that is that's not designed to take up, and that results in foraminal stenosis. Now what about this idea that there can be congenital stenosis? Well congenital means that's something that you're either born with or develops as your body matures. It is true that some people have larger or smaller canals than do other people just as some people have bigger ears or smaller ears than do other people. However, if you've made it a decade or two or three without a problem and now you do have a problem, then it's not because you were born with a smaller canal than other people. 
is likely the result of a disc that's degenerating, making the foramen smaller, or it's bulging, impact the, impacting the intervertebral foramen or the central canal, or there is thickening of the muscles or ligaments that hold it together. The final reason why you may have spinal stenosis is that the stress and the strain and the wear and the tear on the joint that you would suppose would wear down the bone, in fact, causes the bone to thicken. Much in the same way that if you put stress and strain on the skins of your hands by shoveling or raking out in the yard, you might suppose that the skin would wear down, but in fact, what does it do? It actually thickens, and they call that a callus. Bone does much the same thing. You might suppose that it would wear down, but in fact, calcium is deposited. And as calcium deposits build up further and further, we begin to form bone spurs or osteophytes. This final model that I'll hold up for you shows what looks like little icicles on the outside edges of that vertebrae. And on the front here, it's easy to see. If those icicles are on the back, then it might impact the central canal. If these icicles are on the side, or these bone spurs are on the side, then it can actually impact the intervertebral foramen. So there are several reasons for spinal stenosis. And those reasons again are a degenerated disc that is losing height, bulging or herniated discs, muscle spasms and thickened ligaments, and arthritic changes. And as I mentioned before, you can have one or the other or a combination. If you'd like more information, log on to our website at www.trianglediscs.com or send me an email to office at trianglediscs.com. Put 101 things I need to know about my bad back into the subject line and I'll send you a free ebook entitled 101 things I need to know about my bad back. Hope this helps.